Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we're gonna pump the brakes on some of the big, broad, Pokemon franchise-altering topics for a day, and talk about character customization. And the reason I wanna talk about it today is because its inclusion in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as a main feature, on top of it being clothing, but you can also change skin color, is a really good sign for the franchise. And I think it's a feature that is really, it's it's well loved nowadays, and it's really good to see them included in a remake because it breaks with some tradition that the Pokemon franchise has been going on for the last couple years. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss some of the implications of character customization and why ultimately it is a major benefit for the Pokemon franchise to have it in every single one of its games moving forward. So with that being said, let's discuss it. Character customization is a really interesting topic for Pokemon, and it's a really interesting topic to discuss in the light of these being remakes of older games that did not have the feature. Now, for those of you who have played Pokemon for even a short amount of time, you'll probably know that it's a relatively new feature for the franchise. It debuted in mainline games in 2013 with Pokemon X and Y, and it's grown in its complexity ever since. There were a couple different outfits and customizations of outfits that you could wear back then, and you had the ability to change your skin tone and your hair color. But in the remakes that came after X and Y, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, there was no character customization whatsoever. There was no ability to change your character's skin tone or hair color. There was no ability to change the outfits and clothing that your character wore. All of that was stripped away from the game, and you just basically played as Brendan and May from the originals. They could have easily gone and done this exact same formula in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl's remakes, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but Ilka, the developers, and working with Game Freak, decided no, this is a feature that is now a staple of the franchise. This is a feature that our players expect, and this is a feature that our players really love as a way to express themselves in a game that is largely about self-expression. We're playing a game in a franchise where the entire appeal is building different teams of creatures from a wide array of now 900 different characters. You can create any team you want, a monotype team, a type with a specific theme, a type with a color theme. You can have an all shiny team. You could have a team of all male or all female Pokemon. You could have a team of Pokemon with different forms, regional variants. You could do Pokemon with a Nuzlocke challenge where you're selecting the first one you find on a route. This is a game all about customizability. And for the franchise to have waited until X and Y to include such a paramount customization feature is always going to be strange to me, but they did it, and it's a welcome thing. And now that we are in generation, what are we in? Eight, and we're fast approaching what will hopefully one day be generation nine after Legends Arceus. We're getting to a thousand Pokemon. We're getting into territory where the scope of Pokemon is continually growing and continually expanding. So to see them bring back a fan favorite feature unlike some other fan favorite features that Game Freak has been pretty okay to just kind of leave in the dustpan of history, Mega Evolution being one of them, it's really good to see that character customization is back. And as I mentioned before, it means a lot for the Pokemon franchise, not only because it allows the players to have a new level of customization and one of the biggest benefits of trainer customization that we've seen in recent years is that they've grown it and expanded it. From X and Y, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, it was very limited. Once we hit Sun and Moon, however, your options really exploded. And once we got into Sword and Shield, there were boutiques in almost every single city, and you could really customize your character to your heart's content with different shirts, jackets, pants and shorts, different shoes, different hats, you didn't have to wear a hat, different haircuts and hair colors in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, the options were incredibly varied. And it's really good to see because it allows people to express themselves more. The character customization and your character options as a whole were very limited in the past. You had a white uh, skin toned character with brown hair or blonde hair usually, and that was your character that you got with one set eye color, one set hair color, and one very basic skin tone. For people who have a darker skin tone or might have dyed hair or different colored hair, the options to represent yourself in the game were incredibly limited. You had your name, which you could change, and that was it. For a franchise, as I mentioned before, that focuses so much on that customization, it was something that was sorely lacking. And it's really good that as we've gone from generation to generation, they've gradually improved and added things to this feature. 
Now, before we move ahead with the rest of the video, I just wanted to mention that some of you guys who are watching this video, hopefully enjoying it, of course, aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe at any time, and it would just do a ton to show me that you want to see topics like this in the future and that you're enjoying our Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl videos as much as it seems that you guys are from some of your comments and from your likes that you leave on every video. Be sure to hit that button, change it from red to like grayish white. Whatever it is now, I don't. They need a color for it. It's 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 not very visually appealing, but it's good. We have it now. It is more fully fledged than it's ever been, and it's being included in every single game. It was in Sword and Shield. It was in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It was in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. We're, we're on a good track record with it now. Legends Arceus, we don't know for sure if it's going to have trainer customization, but we have seen some things in the Jubilife Village area of the game that makes it seem like there are going to be some customization options. But then we come to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the focus of this video. This is a remake of a game that came out in 2006-2007, and it did not have character customization. But it is important to note there was a game in this gen that had character customization, and that was Pokemon Battle Revolution. Now, it was a Wii game, it wasn't necessarily a mainline game, even though it does have connectivity with the mainline games. You can transfer your DS Pokemon into battle with them, and you could also get, I believe, a Magmatar or an Electivire at the end of the game and then send it back to your copy of Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. So it had connectivity, even though it wasn't necessarily mainline. But in this game, you could customize your character. Shirts, hats, clothing of all sorts. I believe you could change skin color, you could change character type as a whole and have different models of characters. You could be a, a big bodybuilder or like a school kid. Your options were very much, they were better than they are in the current games, to be honest. You could have different types of characters in terms of their physical traits, not just their, their cosmetic traits, if you will. But this was a Gen 4 feature, so character customization did exist in some way in this gen, but like I said, did not exist in the main games. When we got Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we were coming off the heels of the first real mainline game to have character customization, and they completely stripped it. Just didn't exist. You could not do anything in terms of customizing your character. So they made a conscious decision here. They said, look, we are trying to make remakes that are decently faithful to the originals, but at the same time, we understand that there are modern amenities and modern benefits of the Pokemon franchise that the players probably expect. So they've replaced the game corner with the Pokemon Boutique, it seems. This is going to be in Veilstone City. We don't know if there's going to be boutiques in other places. And we also don't fully know the scope of the feature in these games just yet. From what we've seen in the newest trailer, it appears that you're going to be able to change up your outfits as a whole, just like you could in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. In those remakes, you could change up a select outfit and you could also put your Pikachu or your Eevee in the outfit too. It was really cute. But you couldn't mix and match the pieces. And it appears that this might be the route they're going down with BDSP, even though I will fully say it is not confirmed yet. You've, there is a very strong chance that you're going to be able to mix and match these clothing items. And it's really good because it appears, based on the trailer again, that it changes your appearance in the overworld as well. It's not just in battle where you can see a different outfit. Your little chibi model walking around with little pudgy legs in the overworld of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is also going to display these characteristics. It's really good to see, and it's understandable that they replaced the game corner with this feature as a lot of the gambling laws in Europe have changed to the fact that if you include any example of gambling in your game, it immediately gets slapped with like an 18 plus rating, which probably is not ideal for a Pokemon game, a franchise that is aimed generally at children, even though a lot of adults play it too. So with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you use character customization in Pokemon games? Is it something that you've come to expect? And are you happy with the fact that not only can you change your clothing, but they have brought back the ability to change your skin tone and your hair color, which listen, we're in the year 2021. If, if any game does not give you this option, you have to ask questions about this company and what their ideals are and what their values are because everyone should be able to be represented in a game. They should be able, especially a game where you are really putting yourself onto the player character. It is a silent protagonist. You are the protagonist in a Pokemon game. It is a representation of you. It should portray who you are as well as humanly possible. So do you use this feature and are you happy to see it in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section and be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the topic and you want to see more smaller discussion topics in the future as well. So with that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.